You know, what we talk about is intent versus impact. And regardless of the intent, there's an impact. So whether he intended to wear blackface or that to be a racist incident uh, doesn't really matter to us. It's the fact that it has that impact on people. And, and that's why it uh, we labeled it as anti-black racism. And, and that's what it is. So we, we try to differentiate between regardless of what the intent was, it is still racist. Uh, and that's what we tried to inform the community of over the weekend. Ryan Bird speaking on behalf of the Toronto District School Board about a Toronto high school teacher who went to work in blackface on Friday. He's been put on home assignment now. Parkdale Collegiate Institutes also filed a report with the TDSB as an investigation is now underway. The response has been swift as we hear from school officials and the Ministry of Education today. But it's the moments that unfolded on Friday that has left many people with unanswered questions. Joining us now is Charlene Grant. She's the Chief Advocacy Officer for Parents of Black Children and Sara Latta, the mother of a grade nine student at Parkdale Collegiate, one of whom blew the whistle on this very incident. Sara, let's start with you. Uh, you got a text message from your son who was sitting in class on Friday morning. What did that text message say and what was your reaction to it? Sure, yeah. So to be clear, he wasn't in the class with the teacher who came in blackface. He got a text himself from a student who was in the class, and he shared the message with me simply saying, check this out, a teacher came in blackface. Can you believe it? And could you believe it? I couldn't believe it. I absolutely could not believe it. You know, and when I think about the kinds of things that he reflected as his initial reaction, he used words that come easily to him, uh, weird, bizarre, unbelievable. But I think underneath that was shock, confusion, and disbelief. Mm. So, Sarah, what are you saying to your son about this, and how is he feeling today? That's a good question. I mean, we talked about it all weekend. We talked about it again today. Um, when he had an opportunity to actually speak to the principal about some other material he had come across on social media that he found disturbing. Um, it's an evolving conversation. I think most importantly, one of the things that we're talking about is that while this was an individual teacher and they have been put on home duty, um, it is reflective of a culture and it didn't happen in isolation. And as a new student in the school, I think we're trying to come to terms with what it means to be in an environment in which anti-Black racism could flourish. And that's incredibly disturbing. And that's a disturbing concept for me as an adult to come to terms with, and it's incredibly disturbing for a 14-year-old. But it's the reality. Charlene, let's jump into that a little further, dig a little further uh, into that, the culture, uh, the fact that we're having this conversation again in November 2021, when two years ago the Prime Minister himself was embroiled in a blackface scandal. In your mind, what went wrong here? How does this keep happening? Because no one is being held accountable when they commit anti-black racism attack on our children. Someone doesn't that was a deliberate act. You don't make a mistake painting your face black. Let's be clear. That was intentional. That was deliberate. And that was an attack on our, on our black students in, in the Toronto District School Board. And you talk about culture. So parents of black children, we represent families across the province, across the country, who are facing anti-black racism within the education system. And so far to date, we have 30 cases since school opened in September, and Toronto District School Board has about 10. So this is not new, this is not an isolation. Um, we are, our children are expected to function in this violent environment and still be successful. It's wrong. And Charlene, it, it's very important now, as all of the kids, but especially black kids, see how we handle this, right? How would you say this is being handled so far? Well, one of the things that we that we are always seem to be fighting for is justice. We always seem to be fighting to be heard. And unless we have it captured on camera or someone takes a video or a picture, it's usually prove it, prove it, prove it. For once, we would like the black community, if there's such a thing, because I always hear the black community, but for the black students to see justice, feel justice. In, in, in this case, that it was so blatant, 
that that this harm was done to them. It's traumatizing. And it's continuously, continuously. And they continue to show up at school hurt and expecting to function. Sarah, I want to talk more about the timeline because your understanding of this is there was not an immediate reaction to remove the teacher from the situation. This teacher, according to what you told me when we had a conversation earlier, actually yeah, went right. into a team building exercise with what, 100 other students and some educators. Tell me about what your son told you about the situation that unfolded at the school that morning. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's my understanding that um, contrary to the spirit of what the letter to family seems to suggest, that as soon as it was uh, brought to the attention of the administration, the teacher was asked to wash their face as if that's a remedy and removed mm -hmm. from the school and sent home. Um, quite on the contrary, the teacher taught his class, which my son was not in, but then my son interacted with him in the gym during, as you mentioned, a team building activity where about 100 plus students were present. At the time, students were whispering and pointing back and forth to each other. My son told me that he, in the hallway, had passed other teachers of his and mentioned to them, hey, Mr. So-and-so, guess who I saw in blackface? Can you believe it? And the response was, oh, really? Did you ask him what his costume was? You know? So this is, this is the information that we're getting from the children, um, that in fact, um, uh, the response was not rapid at all, and that he was allowed to continue to be interacting with children and with other staff um, before he was asked to go home. And because of our coverage on CB24, the education minister, Stephen Lecce, issued a statement to our newsroom. I want to read that for our viewers right now. Uh, students look up to their educators and school leaders, which is why they must lead by example. Wearing blackface demonstrates a complete lack of judgment and is contrary to the pluralistic values we promote within our school system, inclusion and respect. This only underscores why our government mandated compulsory anti-racism training for all educators and school board staff. It's why we strengthened accountability and sanctions against racism through the Ontario College of Teachers. Charlene, is the training working in your view? Let me just address what was just mentioned about the Ontario College of Teachers. Yes, they amended the professional misconduct, but what they failed to imp implement is accountability. What they have done, they have asked school officials to, um, it's not mandatory um, reporting. We have asked for manda mandatory reporting. If a teacher, if an educator commit an act of hate, they should be mandatory reporter reporting to the Ontario College of Teachers. But that's not what's mandated. That's not what's happening. Parents are forced to report a teacher who have used the N-word, teacher who have perpetuated an anti-Black racism. Educators, we're leaving what the ministry, minister has done, has left the educators to police themselves. And what we're seeing is more and more parents of black children are now reporting educators and, and, edu and directors of education who are educators who are not reporting their racist educators. And we need the unions to step up here. We are now asking black members to, to pay dues to support and, and for, the, for the union to support their racist educators. This is racist, and the minister should have called it racist. That was a race, racial attack on your black educators, your black students, and even the newest black edu director of education that was just hired at the board. And this happens in one of the most diverse cities in the world, at one of the most diverse school boards in the world. Charlene Grant, Sarah Lada, thank you both so much for your time. It's an important conversation, and I'm so happy you were, you were able to join us for this. Thank you. Thank you for having Thanks us. Thanks very much. Thank you both.